The five portrait lighting positions are the key to all light on set. So if you don't know what they are or you need a refresher, stick around. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on Sign Lens, we're gonna cover the five basic portrait lighting positions. If you already know these, you're gonna to wanna to stick around as a refresher course. If you don't know them, this becomes a foundation for all lighting situations. It really, truly does. So I've got Kiana Babaiva here with me. You can follow her at? Instagram at Oxygen. Instagram at Oxygen. So check that out. She's gonna be here. She's kind enough to sit and allow me to work lighting positions on her in place. That sounds stupid, doesn't it? We're gonna bring this light around. We've got an overhead camera that'll show us where we move this light. I'm gonna try to talk about the, the really subtleties of each of these positions because even though they seem pretty simple and pretty straightforward, there are some real subtleties on what make these work. These lighting positions are tried and true. They're the things that people have used forever. It also gives you an idea of where to put your light when you're beginning to light a room or something. It does not mean that your light has to stay a certain hardness or, or softness. You can do whatever you want with it, which gives you infinite number of possibilities as you apply these five positions. You can do so many different things with them to make them interesting. So, learn these positions, learn how to apply them, they're gonna become the foundation for most of the lighting decisions that you're going to make. So let's take a look at a Rembrandt. Rembrandt truly liked that dark shadow, and as he would look at light coming through a window, or with whatever light source he was using, he started to see that the nose naturally makes a triangle on a person's face. First off, this Rembrandt here, it's way too low. So this light's gotta go up, 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 up. When I get this light in the right position, her nose closes the loop that's underneath her chin here. So her chin shadow, this nose shadow breaks into that chin uh, shadow and creates a triangle. That's a true Rembrandt, a very pretty light. Now I can take and, and fill this just a little bit of light. I can fill this, I can make this a very flat Rembrandt. You know, I can pull it out and make it kind of shadowy, or we can just let it really be deep. It really depends on what you want to do. So you have all the options in the world. I can fill this from underneath. If I want to favor opening up the shadow under her chin, I can really do whatever I want. If I fill it from behind, I can almost take my Rembrandt and start to give myself a little bit of hair light on her. So it becomes an easy transition into other different kinds of lighting. But a Rembrandt becomes our first one. The number one lighting position is our Rembrandt. Now again, she's turned away from the light. Her shoulders are turned to the light, but her head is turned back to the camera. But now that gives me the opportunity to create what's called a split light. A split light is simply splitting the face right down the center. So I'm gonna bring this light way around. I'm gonna use my Rocky Mountain leg here with my Kupo stand. Whoop. We're falling apart over here. The reason I like octodomes versus uh, square boxes is very, very simple, and that's just simply, I like the round uh, highlight in the eye. Uh, that's why I like them, as, uh, and I think they're a great choice. A square box is square, a round is round, feels more like lighting sources that we see, it looks, looks right in the eye. So there's our split light. We've moved the light way around to the side, and then now the light just simply does exactly that. It splits the face. Highlight, shadow. Uh, there's no, no bleed of the light around onto the, uh, the side of the cheek. We're still looking into the shadow side of the face. If she turns her face into the light now, and there comes the Rembrandt. Chin down a little bit, there you go. Now look back, and come back this way here. So we're going from a Rembrandt into that split light. So those two transition pretty easily. Split light to Rembrandt to a broad light, very easy to kind of transition between those three lights. When you get this in the right position, they look fabulous. So again, I can open this up outside of her face, gives me the ability to really open that up. And if we want to flatten it out, I can really get in there and flatten it out as well. Again, I can try to do something that opens up a little bit of her hair and gives us something to look at there. So there's a split light. Now, if we simply take her and turn her legs away from the light, and now she's moved her position, looking away from the light, she looks back into the camera now. We've taken that split light and it's turned into a broad light. We're basically looking at the broad lit side of her face through the camera. The camera's looking at the side of the face that's lit. It's a position that is used all the time. I don't think it's the most interesting. I like to look into the shadow side a little more than I do the broad side, but it's certainly a position that looks very nice. If I fill this correctly, this broad light can be very pretty. If we push in with this, 
we get just this open kind of lit. It's like really bright highlights on the, the uh, broad side of her face and then a nice open look on the shadow side when you push this card way in. Just let it really open up and fill. Again, we can come up in the back, try to get a little light on her hair, or we can even come in underneath if we want, which changes the look a little bit. And there's a broad light. You see the broad, broad light used all the time. It's a very, very common light, but probably not as much as a Rembrandt or a split. Now we're gonna go to what's called a butterfly or a paramount light. Why is it called a butterfly or paramount light? Well, it's called a paramount light because back in the uh, 20s and 30s, the light, a lot of the uh, actresses wanted to have a, para a paramount, which is a highlight overhead that gives this little kind of butterfly underneath the nose. That's why it's called a butterfly light. A lot of actresses had this in their contract. They couldn't be photographed unless it was with a butterfly light. So a butterfly light is very easy. I'm gonna take my light, I'm gonna move it all the way around. I'm gonna slide it right next to my camera here. I'm gonna get Kiana to look right back into the camera. There's my butterfly light. This is a beautiful light uh, for women especially because what we get is we have a highlight, runs the nose, drops this beautiful shadow underneath the nose, and sinks the cheeks. We get a little bit of shadow on each side of the cheek. It's a very common light to use with women. It just looks really pretty. I mean, it looks great on men as well, but it looks very, especially uh, uh, beautiful on women because of the cheeks and the cheekbones. If I'm in a hurry, if I'm in a tight situation, I need to light fast, I've got a group of people, throw the light up next to the camera, get it up high and get it in that butterfly position and it looks really good. It's a great go-to light in a hurry. When you start to get the light to the side, you got a group, it becomes very difficult to get it to be even. You've got to feather it and just work with it a little more. But at the camera, high, you get an easy butterfly light with someone and it works out really simple. If I take this light now and I drop it down lower, I can almost flatten her face right out because I'm right above the camera. It's not my favorite place. I don't think that works as well as it can, but it's interesting. I think a butterfly light is nicer when you get it up. Get it up a little higher. Start to see that shadow develop underneath her nose. And that's a prettier light. Now I'm going to take and just take my fill card. And the best place for this now is to come in from underneath. I'm going to reflect that light back in. I'm going to open up the shadow under her chin, under her nose. That's the hardest place is the chin shadow. It becomes very deep in this. That's why some people do what's called a clamshell lighting. You got a light up in a butterfly position and you throw a soft box below that just opens up the shadows. You put that on a lower setting, it opens up the shadows beneath the chin, underneath the nose, and just kind of uh, flattens things out a little bit, but looks very, very nice. See but a clamshell lighting all the time. But this acts kind of like a clamshell light in that it's bouncing back in. Clamshell is just simply two soft boxes. You look in her eye, you can see that round catch light in her eye. That gives us a sense that she's alive and not dead. So we want that catch light. So this octodome has got to be up a little bit. To give us that nice shadow. Too low is too flat. Too high starts to deepen her eyes and that nose shadow starts to drop way onto her chin. We don't want that. But now let's go to the last one. It's called a loop light. It's a loop light because it doesn't close the loop onto the chin and become a Rembrandt. It's a loop that just kind of dies into the cheek don't want it straight across, so if I bring this around for a loop light, I'm coming all the way around here now. And I can loop this from either side. It doesn't have to be here or there, up or down, in or out, in a box with a fox. So I can do a loop light from this side, but because of this white wall, it's just killing it and you don't see it very well. So I'm gonna take this back around to loop position. The difference between a loop and a Rembrandt is the loop light's gonna be kind of in between the two, and it's gonna be a tiny bit lower. So when this light's too low, this is not a loop light. Even though I've got a shadow coming off and somebody's say, oh, well, that's a loop there. No, that's just a broad, deep shadow along the side of her nose and has no interest at all. So bring this up a little higher. And around a little bit here to so the front. She has such a petite nose, we don't see a really heavy loop light on her face. And bring this up just a little bit. Now we see this loop starting to develop on the side of her nose there. It gives us a nice bridge line, a shadow line on her nose, a nice loop off to the side, but doesn't close it, doesn't turn it into a Rembrandt. We still see a highlight in there, so that loop just kind of starts to, to dive into her nose or to her cheek. So again, very easy to fill this. Make it as flat as we want and open. It's fascinating because every single face is different. You think, oh, that person looks great, look great with this. It's like it, they don't, it just, I mean, they may or they may not, but it depends on the size of their nose, it depends on the way their cheekbones are, 
depends on how sunken in their cheeks are. Every single thing is gonna be a little bit different. So as you're lighting a person, look at their face, think about the different portrait positions, position it, experiment a little bit, height, just keep moving around and experimenting. Don't get yourself locked into, well, I threw the light up in this position, so it's gotta be there. You know, move it around a little bit. When you start to learn where to put them, you'll be able to predict that a lot easier. You'll get it in the right place, it'll come a lot quicker, and you'll be able to see it a lot easier. So in every single one of these lighting positions, we're only using one light. That's the key light, and using that and putting it in the different lighting positions, and that becomes a very successful experience. It's a key light with a fill card. So these are really one light solutions. One light solutions that give you the ability to give you a nice light and with a single light. You start making decisions with these positions about the person's face and what you want to portray. If I want a, a person to look very good and to be open, then I'll probably go to a butterfly with a fill card and really soften that out so it looks really open and soft and pretty. Uh, also the size of this source is going to make a huge difference. This is a pretty small source. A larger source is going to make this Rembrandt wrap more. So the light's going to see into the Rembrandt more and the shadow side's going to be filled a little more than it is. So by adding a large source, this Rembrandt can be, even, uh, can be open on the shadow side. By adding a smaller source, you can make this Rembrandt even harder. If I take this box off, which is really easy to do, you got to be kidding me. I knew how that worked. So there's a Rembrandt in a hard light. This is a hard directional light. You can see it much easier. The triangle is very easy to see there. This is also very easy to fill though. The difference between hard and soft light is simply the transition between shadow and highlight. When your highlight to shadow is very quick, it's a hard light. If the highlight to shadow is very slow, in that there's a gradation, it slowly becomes from highlight into shadow, that's a softer light. So in this case, we have a very fast transition. We put this in here and it really flattens out her face, gives us a nice look at that Rembrandt. You can see all these lighting positions with that much easier because there's our Rembrandt. We go into a split. Down to a loop light. See that really strong loop there? So there we go, we can fill that in, there we go. And then we go to our butterfly. So there's our butterfly in harder light, a little easier to see. See the hard shadow dropping around into the nose. Really easy to fill in, because we throw this in, opens up her chin, opens up her nose. Now back to our broad light, which we forgot about. And there's our broad light from the side. You look into the broad side as she turns away from the camera. So it's interesting because look at the eyelashes on her. You see her eyelashes are very strong on her uh, nose line there. That's just because this is such a hard light. You see right down to the shadow of the eyelashes, which is really interesting. So there you go, the five portrait positions. Use them as a starting, a kind of a jumping off point. When you start to set your light, it gives you an idea where to set it, how to make the face look good, and then start to fill it and augment it. Now this is just a single light setup here. We could take this so much further if we start to add a rim light and add a light on the background. There's so many things we can do, but that gives you a basis to get out there and start lighting. So put some images up on our Facebook group. Show the different positions, call them out. Show them to your friends so that we all can see what you're doing. We want to hear from you, so get over to that Facebook group. Follow us on the Slanted Lens and keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. It's March and we're giving away a Tamron 35mm 1.8 lens. It's a prime lens, a great lens. To win this lens, you've got to go to Tamron and the Slanted Lens and follow us both on Instagram. Post your story and tag both Tamron and the Slanted Lens and that'll get you into Ender as well. And last of all, tag a friend in the comments. So it's a, a lens for Instagram year. It's a lens for Instagram. It's an Insta lens. It's a grandma lens. A grandma lens? My grandma used this lens. No, she didn't. So get out there, tag and follow. Subscribe.
to the slanted lands. <laughs> it was off balance. <laughs> I love that. <laughs>